everyone, Aaron here, helping musicians get better faster. And what you just heard was the middle school selection for tuba for Florida for 2023, the Allstate audition. Before we get too far into my preparation tips for you, go ahead and feel free to snag a copy of the advanced method if you have not done so already. I'll have an affiliate link down below, but this is where both of your etudes are going to come out of. Now the affiliate link doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help me and the channel a little bit more. So. If you're gonna snag it, consider grabbing it from that link. I will have a PDF of all of the etudes for every single level eventually on my website, but at the time of recording, it's not up there yet. If you do see a link in the description, that means it's already up there if you've gotten here a little bit later. So just look out for that. And if you're subscribed, you'll be a part of that new seed and I'll go ahead and update it on there as well. So the first etude I wanna start out with is the technical. Now, when it comes to dynamics, I would shoot for a really broad forte so that our piano can be really comfortable. So make sure this opening is maybe a little bit bigger uh, than your normal forte. That will also allow you to make an adjustment for the mezzo forte that's in here um, and have that be a little bit diversified uh, in terms of volume. But the primary big thing in this etude is the articulation. This etude has a lot of articulations written in it. Uh, you can't get through one measure without some sort of accent, staccato, slur, a combination. So just make sure you're really trying your best to differentiate between what's what and what articulation you're doing and all that sort of a thing and make sure that they are consistent. So a staccato in measure one and a staccato in measure 10 feel the same. The big rhythmic trap inside of this thing is going to be your dotted eight sixteenths, especially with that day crescendo going on. Try your best to make sure that those dotted eight sixteenths, the sixteenth part stays very snappy and it doesn't turn into like a swung eighth triplet -y mess, but it, it retains that dotted eight sixteenth. And one of the big choices you have to make uh, because of where the cut is that FBA decided to end this etude on uh, is that last note is actually written mezzo forte, but you've decrescendoed into it and it acts as the end of the etude for our purposes. But if you look further into the etude, that eighth note actually acts as the beginning of a new phrase, not the end of something. So if you wanna be safe and go with what's written, you can play that mezzo forte, so decrescendo, and then hit that one particular note a little bit bigger, that's fine. Uh, but you can also make the choice, I think, to decrescendo gradually and play a little bit quieter, which is I think what I did in my recording. I think with the rallentando paired with the decrescendo, for this situation, it makes artistic sense. Um, for me as a judge, I wouldn't necessarily put it against you as long as you're doing something uh, with either decrescendoing and following the phrase you're coming from or uh, just playing a mezzo forte as written. Uh, I, as long as you're doing something, um, I don't think you're gonna get in too much trouble one way or the other. So now let's move into the lyrical. The name of the game on this one is going to be intonation. Because the tube is so large, I couldn't get it in frame in a way, but you can see 
my left hand moving my slides around, I'm really paying attention to where the intonation is on this thing and especially paying attention to what is happening with my intonation as I decrescendo. So if you're starting to fall flat or rise sharp uh, whenever decrescendos are happening at the end of these big phrases, um, that's going to look or sound really bad. Um, so making sure that those stay and maintain the way we want them to is gonna be really important. As a judge, I'm also going to be listening for really clean leaps. Uh, there's a couple really big ones in here uh, that I wanna make sure there's not, you know, what I affectionately call French horn in the middle where you're hitting a bunch of extra notes in the middle, but it's actually like the very first one that I see is on line two, the G to the E flat, uh, making sure that that G to E flat doesn't have like four notes in the middle of it, but the, that leap is consistent and even. I would play this with piano a little bit bigger than my normal pianos, and then that would bring mezzo forte up to almost a forte, uh, just so I don't have to start the whole thing super, super quiet. I think the big thing is just making the difference in the dynamics. So if you're starting so quiet that you can't really get that first note out, especially if you're nervous in the audition, uh, it's not gonna be really helpful. In the end of the etude, really wants to slow down. Uh, it really kind of is begging for a rallentando, but it's not written. So fight that urge and make sure that you're maintaining tempo all the way to the end of the etude. But that's my big advice, kind of looking at these things as a judge, what I would be looking for. Otherwise, the etudes are pretty straightforward. It's your normal, you know, get good stuff. Uh, of course, I do think they're a little high for middle school, but these are the etudes we've got and we got to get good at them. So instead of complaining about the high notes, we're just gonna hunker down and get good. If you made it this far and you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing, liking, and pushing all the buttons that help us out a lot, especially if you're part of like the 80% of you who watch these videos and aren't subscribed, uh, it helps out a lot. So I'd, I'd really appreciate it. But with that, again, I'm Aaron. Be happy, never satisfied. I'll see you in the next one. Good luck in your preparation.